Hello, I'm Song Doon Lee from Hamam Church in Chinchun. I used to be a very timid person. When I thought about myself, I thought, I'm introverted and passive, and I hated my personality. However, after meeting the risen Lord, I realized that he thought of me in a completely different way. I never thought I was good enough, but I'm standing here to boast about God, my everlasting Father who loves me so very much. There's a reason why I grew up as a timid child. When I was younger, I lost a fight to a boy who was a year younger than me. After that happened, I lost my (laughs) self-confidence. I was so ashamed of myself that I couldn't even meet the eyes of my neighbors. This got worse and worse, and I started talking less. Eventually, having conversations with people became very difficult. At some point, having conversations with people became an unimaginable task for me. Because of this kind of personality, when I was a teenager, I was unable to say a single word to girls. I was even afraid that they would come and talk to me first, so I was terrified of them and ran away from them with a red face. I tried all kinds of things in order to change my timid personality. At first, I thought that extreme sports might improve my confidence. So I decided to try martial arts. I tried kickboxing, boxing, and judo in that order. But I would always end up quitting after a month or two because I wasn't able to make any friends. And I would end up feeling self-conscious by myself during the whole class. And that wasn't very fun. And I wasn't all that interested in sports in the first place. So I didn't last very long. I ended up giving up on the martial arts. Then I thought of another way to boost confidence. It was bungee jumping. I thought that if I could overcome that horrific fear and make the jump, I can do anything. So, I went to a bungee jumping site in Sung Nam. As I fastened all the ropes on myself and prepared for my jump, I was scared. I somehow managed to jump the first time, but there was no way that I can do it again. <laughs> To be honest, I came back even more discouraged after bungee jumping. (laughs) This time I began to take speech lessons because I couldn't speak well due to my shyness. After learning the conceptual things first, I had to go to a public place filled with people and speak in a loud voice as part of my training. I studied the concepts of speech really hard, but in the end I just couldn't speak loudly in front of a crowd. If I'd just gone for it, At the time, and did what I was supposed to do, who knows what would have happened. But in the end, I ended up quitting before I even went out on the streets. I really hated my personality. I even thought about doing something to get myself arrested intentionally, so I can go to jail and deal with inmates. Then maybe my fear would go away. As I began my mandatory military service, I thought about applying for the Special Forces Unit. It was supposed to be the toughest place for recruits. But instead, I was sent to the Combat Police Division. After training, I was stationed in Seoul at the U.S. Culture Center as a riot police officer. Even during my life in the military, changing my personality wasn't easy to do. I thought maybe a good beating might be able to change me, but where I was stationed, nothing like that ever happened. (laughs) I had an easy life in the military, but my timid character never had a chance to change. People complained about how hard it was in the army, but I complained about it being so easy on me. (laughs) I developed a particular habit because of my timid personality. In order to deal with a moment of feeling very awkward, I would laugh at myself. I wasn't laughing at anyone else or because I thought the situation was funny. I was just laughing because I didn't know what else to do with myself. But it completely gave people the wrong idea, with good reason. When I got my first post in the Army, I had to report to headquarters with the rest of the new recruits. But one of our supervisors looked kind of comical, and he spoke with a funny accent, too. But despite that, all the recruits were nervous and stood at attention. I couldn't stand the awkwardness of it all, so I let out a little laugh. (laughs) Then the supervisor said, Why, you little punk? 
Then he slapped me on the cheek. I felt frustrated and wronged, but I couldn't say anything. Later on at work, my boss told me because of my laugh, that laugh of yours is going to get you into big trouble someday. I finished my military service, but nothing had changed. I got a job, but life at work was really hard because of my personality. I couldn't communicate with people, and I tried hard to have a good relationship with others, but that didn't last long. I really wanted to die. I didn't have the endurance to finish the things I started, so I would quit easily and frequently switch jobs. Because I couldn't get along with people, I thought working alone might be the best thing for me, so I decided to work as a truck driver. I began to work as a truck driver on my days off. I just stayed home and didn't go outside. I spent my free time watching TV at home or going to the movies alone. But one day, I thought that maybe it wasn't a good idea to just stay at home all the time. Then I happened to read a magazine about hiking. I thought it would be good for my health, and at the same time, it would give me a chance to naturally spend time with people. So I decided to join a hiking club. That was how I met my wife. She was a member of the club. Being the shy person that I was, how could I possibly approach any woman I was interested in? There was an older woman in the club who thought I was a nice and quiet man, and she set me up with the lady I liked on a blind date. The lady, who was now my wife, was kind and pretty, but she was as silent as I was. <laughs> Whenever we would go out to eat at a restaurant, we were both really quiet. So the only conversations we had was about what we were going to order. Then we would just eat and smile at each other. <laughs> that was all we did. I liked her so much, but I couldn't express my feelings. She must have had a hard time because I was so bad at showing her how I felt. Plus her parents didn't really like me. So one day she told me that she wanted to break up with me. I couldn't say no. I can't break up with you. I just sat there with a very sad face. <laughs> then she must have felt sorry for me. After we had dinner, she changed her mind and took her words back. <laughs> then she held my hand and told me, don't worry, okay? <laughs> I was so grateful to her. That was how we kept dating. We met on weekends and hiking trails together without a word. And finally, we got married. I was too shy to propose to her. I couldn't even say, Will you marry me? But I eventually got married thanks to my wife, who was more outgoing than I was. It was truly by the grace of God. <laughs> I got married like that, but my marriage life was not so easy. I had a lot of trouble at work, and since I couldn't adjust and kept quitting job after job, our financial situation was always unstable. And I wasn't a husband who could comfort his wife with sweet words, and I didn't know how to make her happy. My wife always looked sad and frustrated. I knew how she felt, but I couldn't say anything, and I just felt so sorry for her. Time went by, and more and more, I became stuck on the idea that I was a timid and introverted person. I knew that I was trapping myself within the walls of this belief, but I couldn't find a way to escape. In this way, I was becoming cut off and isolated from the rest of the world. In the meantime, my wife heard the gospel from our neighbors who went to Hamam Church in Chunchan. Before she heard the gospel, we used to go to a Catholic church because my wife wanted us to go. Then a little later, she started to go to the Hamam Church. I didn't have any particular faith in Catholicism, so I didn't have any particular reason to oppose her switching to a Protestant church. Later on, I began to follow her to church as well. The first time, I went. It was during summer retreat. Even though the church was new to me, I didn't feel awkward at all. I actually liked it there a lot. I liked how the people approached me first and took care of me. My first impression of the pastor was that he was warm and reliable, like a father, but I didn't understand his sermon because he spoke so fast and loud. But the atmosphere of the church and its people seemed free and natural. I didn't feel awkward. I felt comfortable there. I began to attend small church meetings as well. At least once a week, 
I met with the small church leader to talk about God's Word. Then I went to church on Sunday. But the Word of God never touched me. I especially didn't understand the words. All people are sinners. I was such a timid person that, even if I had complaints, I couldn't easily say them out loud. So instead, I would let my complaints pile up inside me and never said anything negative to anybody. That was why I couldn't easily accept the idea that someone like me was a sinner. Plus, I was extremely sleepy during worship service, or when I was talking to my small church leader about God's Word. As soon as the service started, I would fall asleep. As soon as the service was over, I would open my eyes. Even when I talked to my leader face to face, I would fall asleep. I couldn't understand my strange behavior either. Thankfully, my church preaches the same message repeatedly. No matter how much I dozed or didn't understand, I would get to listen to the message about the resurrection of Jesus again and again, and finally, I came to understand the Word of God. Although I didn't get a shocking revelation or anything like that, I came to know that Jesus was God and that sin was not believing in Him as Lord through the historical fact of the resurrection. But there was always something that bothered me. The testimonies of church members sounded like their lives had totally changed after they believed in Jesus, but I didn't see any special changes in my life. I was still shy when I dealt with people, and I still didn't have self-confidence, so I was still frustrated. In this way, I was having a hard time with my faith. Meanwhile, many of my fellow church members were giving their testimonies on a TV program, and my pastor repeatedly emphasized that every member of our church had to give their testimonies on that program. At first, I thought, I didn't have a very special life, and I haven't even been shocked by the gospel enough to be changed. I don't have anything to testify to, so I didn't even think about writing my testimony. But as time went by, I felt the pressure to write my own testimony. So I decided to write it and started to think about it seriously. Through a lot of thinking and talking to my small church leader, I came to find out my problem. The problem was that my entire focus was on the idea that I should change. I definitely knew that Jesus was God through the sign of the resurrection, and I did come to acknowledge that my sin was that I didn't believe in him. So I thought that I had repented my sin and believed in Jesus as my Lord through that message, but I had never changed. I thought that I should be changed if I believe in Jesus as Lord. However, the change I was thinking of was my timid self becoming joyful and confident. As I saw believers confidently evangelize on the streets and joyfully give testimonies at the pulpit, I thought that I was supposed to become like them. But that wasn't true. The true change was the Lord of my heart changing from myself to Jesus. Amen. Jesus was my Lord. Not because I changed, but because he died and rose again for me. As I heard these words, I received Jesus, who died and rose again from the dead, for my sins as my Lord. Amen. My leader told me about how my pastor officiated in weddings. There was something that the pastor always said during wedding ceremonies. It was that husbands and wives must acknowledge they have differences because they each grew up under different circumstances, so they had to accept each other just as they are. If they tried to fix each other's differences instead, they end up fighting. The pastor said, Isn't there someone who brushes his teeth three times a day? But there's also someone who brushes his teeth only once a day. Through this story, I came to think about God and the church community differently. Just like my leader had said, God didn't love me because I changed. God loved me and accepted me just as I was now. The church community was the same. My leader said that the church was the body of Christ. So if there was a part of our body that is in pain or is having a hard time, we should all the more protect and take care of that part of the body. That was why we were not ashamed to reveal our lackings and weaknesses to each other, and thus we could be free. These words set my heart free. I became freed from the thought that I should change myself. I was so thankful when I came to know that. 
Although I was a timid person without much self-confidence, God loved me as his child, and I didn't fall short of receiving his love at all. Also, I came to know why so many church members were able to confidently reveal the shameful aspects of their lives in their testimonies. The church community that God had built in this world was a community that loved and accepted each other just as they were. When I realized that, I was so thankful to be part of this community. When I came to know about the church community, the body of Christ, I got the desire to do whatever I could to serve the church. God seemed to see through my heart because he gave me a chance to volunteer for the church. One of the brothers who drove the church bus for the evening prayer service couldn't do it anymore, so the church needed a new volunteer. This brother asked me if I wanted to drive the bus, so I drove the church bus for a while. I often met my church brothers to get their help in writing my testimony, so I naturally got to spend more time with them and get close to them. Getting along with people used to be the hardest thing for me, but I was so thankful because the brothers approached me and talked with me first. Nowadays, I'm making more and more close friends. As I spent more time with the church community, I came to do something that was unimaginable for my timid self to do before. I was evangelizing. I always thought evangelism was something that you did alone. Some passionate church friends invited me to go with them to evangelize. So I took up my courage and went with them. When we were together, I can do it too. When the confident brothers who were good at speaking approached the people first and talked, I just handed them the gospel flyer. <laughs> then I began to gain a bit of courage. So I'd say a few words too. That was how I started evangelizing with my church members and we went to college campuses and hospitals. Recently, I gained more confidence, and I walked around my apartment complex and put up gospel flyers on the doors. This really might not be a hard thing to do for other people, but it was a truly big change for me. The change was not sudden or fast, but when I think about how I will continue to change, I become filled with hope. I am so thankful about that. I used to tell myself, I'm a timid person and I was dissatisfied with myself, and I hated myself. But through the gospel, I came to know just how much God loved someone like me. Then it didn't matter to me anymore whether I was timid or not. Like Jesus, I become a person who can accept people just the way they are, and I will share the gospel of his love to everyone for the rest of my life. Thank you.